Untitled by Judith Scott. Judith Scott, over 18 years of making artwork, established her own distinctive process and visual language. She created her sculptures by wrapping objects in yarn and fabric. Her armatures were assorted items available to her like yarn cones, electric fans, and bamboo slats. She was even known to use unattended video cameras or car keys to wind into her work. How might you be able to tell what is concealed within this sculpture? How would you want to know, or do you prefer it to remain a mystery? Scott's sculptures are extraordinarily evocative. What do you see when you look at the sculpture in front of you? Does it seem abstract or, in some way, representational? Some people, when viewing Scott's work, ascribe human characteristics to it. Do you find this work anthropomorphic? Others have reported feeling an overwhelming urge to pick up Scott's sculptures and cradle them as if they were babies. Do you identify with this feeling? Judith Scott was born deaf and with Down syndrome. Because her hearing loss went unrecognized in her youth, she was misperceived as uneducable and spent much of her life institutionalized. When she was in her 40s, her twin sister Joyce became a guardian and initiated her deinstitutionalization. Quoted in the spring 2001 issue of Fiber Arts Magazine, Joyce told of her sister's experiences. The state institution was a terrible place, worse than terrible, full of the awful sounds and smells of human suffering and abandonment. It still lives in my nightmares. That Judy has not been destroyed is a testament to the human spirit. There is no doubt that institutional life has left its mark. Her habit of stealing small bits and pieces, of hoarding things, of being initially suspicious of strangers, and of tending to isolate herself, these all reflect those terrible times. Her incredible ability to persevere and to sustain her focus, to hear her own inner voice, may also come from those years of crowded aloneness. The Creative Growth Arts Center in Oakland, California, is an organization that provides a professional studio environment for artists with disabilities and is where Judith Scott spent five hours a day, five days a week making artwork, after her sister became her guardian. Tom DiMaria, executive director of the Creative Growth Arts Center, was quoted in the Atlantic Magazine as saying, Here we use art as a way to give voice to our people, many of whom have not been asked to communicate with the world most of their lives. They have been evaluated by what they cannot do, and suddenly, at Creative Growth, they have the power of having a dialogue with society and the world. Do you find that knowing some of the circumstances of Scott's life affects the way you view or understand her work? Is it important to you to know the context in which the artwork was made, or do you view the artwork as separate from the artist's circumstances?